Mr. Kitchens, what the hell is that? Everyone stops singing. Exactly? How exactly is the note you just sung in this chord? He banged key notes on his practice piano that seemed to grow louder. It was played at me. My blood pressure spiked. My ears pounded. It's not, sir. Then why are you singing the wrong note? I, I made a mistake, sir. I was failing ear training. Ear training is essential for a musician. There's an old saying, if you can't sing it, you can't hear it. And I couldn't sing it. As a guitarist, I was safe in San Diego with the constant support of friends and coddled by a music scene that could withstand practically any artistic statement. <laughs> My entirely unwarranted assumption had been that art school, that art school would be an extension of that protective bubble. There, my craft would be sharpened, my technique honed, all of my self-worth was rooted in my musical ability. The better I played, the more value I had as a person. The Musicians Institute in Hollywood had a reputation of producing extremely accomplished technical artists, and I was compelled. Stories of the great players filled my imagination. Daguerre on the streets of Milan, Segovia in Munich. Maybe I could fit in there somewhere. The visions of a whole new set of influences enticed me. More things to master meant I would expand as a person. In 1998, at 23, I moved to Hollywood. The passing of trucks over manhole covers were a crash of symbols to the steady da-dum, da-dum of my skateboard wheels on the sidewalk. The wind would gust through like a keyboard pad hinting at a chord progression. Even the squat, sun-bleached buildings seemed to pose under the spotlight of the ever-present sun. The perfect place to live for any artist, an artist like me. But you didn't cross Vine. Vine is where the world of dreams ended, bordered by a sidewalk lined with stars. East across Vine took you out of the world. The few stars that remained were cracked and jagged, pointing their edges towards the sky. You can't ride your skateboard on that. The school was situated in the center of that dreamland. Carpet-lined walls, blinking equipment, and the smile of kids not living off of financial aid. <laughs> Music ran through the halls alongside languages of every description. It was a creative Shangri-La. I was giddy to be there. Finally, a place where my talent and ability could find so many outlets. No general education bollocks to waste my time. It was a school based on playing and playing well. The tests were performances, and the performances were competitions. And above it all was the chosen one, the best student. His legend passed from teacher to student, student to student. He was the shit. He could play anyone under the table, hung over. <laughs> what took two hours for me to learn would take the blessed one two minutes, or so I was told. He could transcribe with perfection on the first listen, or so goes the tale. He was the teacher's aide, <laughs> but, but not for any of my teachers. I never saw him play which only fueled my sense of competition and kept his legend intact. Only once did I see him, leaning up against the wall as I rushed to class. Curly hair, generous smile. God damn, he was cool. <laughs> I don't even remember how I knew it was him. It was a uh, given. I have to be like him. On report card day, I received my results of your training class. I failed. 
Of course, there's, there's no failing in a private school. There's just simply not advancing. <laughs> I'd be held back a quarter to repeat air training. I'd fall behind the class and would need more tuition money to go along with that extra quarter. The student loans had already been pushed to their limits. Private schools are very efficient that way. The counselor explained that I would have to pay $2,000 more out of pocket, due immediately. I had no way of generating that kind of money, and no sooner had those words left my mouth than I was out. My ID card was taken, and I was handed a pre-printed congratulatory letter from the bank requesting monthly payments. The school had made no attempt to keep me enrolled. I walked the halls filled with music towards the exit and felt that I was only hearing gray meaningless sound when everyone else heard color. My eyes were a haze. It was done. Fun time was over. My expansion as a person stopped. My value as a human, gone. My identity as a musician, a fraud. I was a technician, not an artist. I would never play the streets of Milan. Segovia was an asshole anyway. <laughs> There's a rule in the art school industrial complex. One in a hundred students will ever really make it. The other 99 are there just to keep the lights on. I was able to pretend to be a musician for the low price of $35,000. It would let her take 10 years to pay off. The truth is, if you are not the shit on the day you arrive, you will not be shit on the day you leave. <laughs> As I headed out through the glass double doors for the last time, a cacophony of the city's traffic repulsed my ears. Spawned from some unseen pool, the homeless, the insane, the Scientologists in their flight crew uniforms, all wandered the sidewalks following some unseen leader fiendishly shuffling towards some mirage of success that was always on the next block or behind the next door. These people were the bounce checks of a dream written without the talent to cash it. And I stayed in my protective bubble of self-delusion. I said, I'm not insane. I'm not homeless. I'm not a Scientologist. I'm still better than these people. <laughs> I supported myself with a full-time job at the Hollywood Guitar Center. The place was a graveyard of failed musicians, still clinging to the dream. <laughs> yes, I had flunked ear training, but how bad could that be? The Monkees were a band, <coughs> Millie Vanilli got paid, Paula Abdul had a singing career. Each step I took tapped out a promise that the right combination was just on the next block. The right project was just behind the next door. Not so impossible. Ringo had the Beatles. Sonny had Cher. Ike had Tina. I just needed to sit tight and it would all pay off. Years would pass. The decline of my identity as an artist was insipid with its soft and steady rhythm. Each foot tap on the ground generated its own momentum walking me away from the identity I had imagined. Each day that passed, the guitar strings would rust a little more. Each season, the guitar case would cinch down a little tighter on the neck. I was never going to be the one. I wish I could say I'd put up more of a fight. It was my time to cross vine. <laughs>